back doing free code camp, JavaScript algos and data structures in the ES6 course on challenge 29 of 29, the last challenge. So today we are going to handle a rejected promise with catch. So in the last three lessons, we created a basic promise. Then we completed that promise fully. So it actually resolved or rejected based on some variable. And then we also handled the promise with dot then. So assuming the promise resolved, we just use dot then in the last lesson to actually get the data out of the promise and just console log it. Now we're going to handle the reject. So if it rejects, we can catch the error. So that's the theme here. So in the last lesson you saw, we took the promise and we said dot then take the result and just console log the result here. There's another method from dot then, which is dot catch, which is used when your promise has been rejected. So assuming we reject here, we want to have a dot then method, or I'm sorry, dot catch method that catches the error and uh, logs it to console apparently. So as you can see, this is executed immediately after the promise reject method is called. So we get our response from server, we reject, activates this method, we immediately are going to hit the catch with whatever was passed to the reject. So we saw in the last lesson, when we resolve this, we get the data string, we got the data string, we take it in the dot then as a result, call back and then console log that result, right? So we name the variable, whatever gets passed into the resolve, we name that here in the dot then, and then we call back and can console log whatever that is, right? So this result would be, we got the data. It's the same thing with a catch, except it's for the reject. So whatever gets passed into the reject will be the variable that we're naming in the catch. So in this case, we're using the uh, variable error. And that makes sense because again, assuming the promise does not succeed, we reject and pass it the error, right? Assuming it doesn't succeed, there was an error of some type. So we need to pass it that error so we can actually handle it in the catch. So we can actually do something with the error. Uh, so we don't just crash our entire site or whatever. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing that we did with the dot then for the resolve. We're going to do the same thing with the dot catch for the reject. Okay, so we're going to take the server request. So make server request you EST. So that's our promise. Const make server request is the promise. That is all of this. And upon reject, we want to dot catch the reject and then same thing as this example, same thing as the dot then example, we need whatever this data was passed to the reject, whatever that data is, we need that in the catch. So we need to name that and call back. So in this case, we can call it error, call back, open it up. In this case, we're just going to console log the error that we just named here. And as you can see in the console, we get data not received. So that's literally the string that was passed to the reject. And as you can see, response is false. If response, reject, take the error, console log the error, that's the error. The exact same thing as we did in the last lesson with the resolve, we're doing with the reject and a catch. Okay, just to demonstrate this even further, data not received with a bunch of exclamations and let's call this error, whatever. And then let's call back and console log, whatever. And you can see it's the exact same thing. This variable, whatever you pass into the reject, when you catch, you name it, and then you have access to it. There we go. So this is not gonna work because I just modified this. So let me just make it back to what it was and then rename it as error because that's what they told us to use. Use error as the parameter. So in the catch, we name the parameter, and now we have access to that parameter, hence why it lit up. Okay, so I hope that helped. That's the end of the ES6 module. Promises are definitely, definitely very common case, and you will see them for almost every type of server request. It's the go-to uh, way to make a server request just by the asynchronous nature of server requests or API requests. Uh, so dot then, dot catch, very important methods to know how they directly correlate to resolve and reject of promises. So I hope that helped. Hope that made sense. And I hope to see you guys in the next course of this free code camp, JavaScript algos and data structures, which will be 
the regular expressions course. That's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll see you guys in that in those videos. And please don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment, ask any questions. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.